America, I ask you to call a friend and tell them to watch the show this week. I ask you to watch this show with a pad and paper. I'm going to ask uncomfortable questions. You need to follow up on them. You need to ask those uncomfortable questions. Today is day number one of a special series that we're calling New Republic. And, I mean, this is not a happy New Republic. America is rapidly being transformed. And if you're like me, hello, my name is Glenn, and I was kind of addicted to the old republic. Before we're turned into France West at best, I'm asking reasonable questions, although people will say that they're hateful questions. I'm going to ask them and ask as many as possible, because nothing seems to make sense. Quite frankly, we may end up with more questions and answers this week, but until we have clear answers on why massive bills are being shoved down the throats of American people without even being read, America, do not allow these people to move any piece of legislation. I don't believe in coincidence. When I see a huge bill after huge bill after huge bill all hurried and given the same emergency, must pass now label, my reaction is, whoa, 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 slow down. Why the rush? Clearly, this is a strategy, and it is working. It is overwhelming the system. It is overwhelming Washington. It is overwhelming the media. And it is overwhelming you. It's an idea from the 1960s. There were radicals called Cloward and Piven. Here it is in a nutshell. The Cloward Piven strategy in a nutshell. Left wing radicals Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven advanced their strategy to end poverty in a May 2nd, 1966 article in The Nation. Cloward Piven starts with the idea that there is a wide gap between the entitlements that poor people are eligible for and the entitlements that they're actually collecting. They say getting everybody onto the welfare rolls will wipe out poverty. And the only way to accomplish that is through a massive multi-city education campaign making heavy use of the media. So once the poor know that they're eligible and start to sign up, what happens next? In their own words, quote, a crisis, end quote. A crisis that starts in the cities that would rapidly spread to a nationwide level and force the government to move quickly to create a new program for direct income distribution, Marxism. Wait a minute. Community organizations overwhelming the system that would lead to a massive redistribution of wealth. Gee, where have I heard that before? That's Cloward Piven's strategy in a nutshell. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's what's happening. But it makes more sense than, oh, yeah, we can just keep spending more money and not reading the bills. If you think all of these unread thousand-page bills are just part of an out-of-control runaway government, um, I don't think it is. It's, uh, it's meant to overwhelm the system. I mean, how can you fight a stimulus package when there's a giant health care bill alongside cap and trade all going full throttle at you at the same time? What happens with one or all of these massive bills pass? I showed you the debt clock a minute ago. We can't spend anymore. E even Barack Obama admitted that much, yet here we are with trillion-plus dollar health care bills and more on the table. Why? Why, given the risk, do you keep pushing? According to the Cloward and Piven strategy, you do it to collapse the system, and once that system has collapsed, a new one is put in its place. Well, what system could possibly be ready to go? I don't know. But what a better time. Is there a better time to implement the 1960s radical ideology from scratch than when a president, who has clearly said over and over again he's not a Marxist, couples himself with far left-leaning Congress and advisors who are self-proclaimed Marxists, socialists, and communists? I'm going to introduce you to a few of them here. Don't go anywhere tonight. You stay with me. Pat Cadell is a former Democratic pollster Democrat, a Democrat. And a liberal Democrat. Who has taken a, a hard look. How are you, Pat? Good to see you. Good to see Good you. To see you. Um, I, you know what, Pat, I am, I am so heartened to see a man who is a liberal Democrat, been in the party forever, um, come out and say, okay, wait, 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 this isn't making sense on what they're saying. Do you believe that 
that it, it makes sense that they're trying to collapse the system? No, I, I, I don't buy this or the ideological part, although the conclusion may get there. I think they're flooding the zones, to use a football metaphor. I prefer that. I mean, your viewers probably understand that. Send out so many things and nobody can cover it all. But I've got to tell you what bothers me, Glenn, which is a question that should be asked. I was with an administration, president comes in, a new president who had not been experienced in Washington, and there have been pent-up demands. But six months in, we were people were still trying to find where the bathrooms were. Right. You know, people still, they thought a lot of people still not appointed. Where did all of these pieces of programs come in this kind of detail? Where do you get a thousand pages or thirteen hundred pages, one after the other, one after another, in such a short amount of time? I, I mean, I have those no, are I, questions that somebody ought to ask because it's the dog that's not barking here. Well, we have asked those questions and I'm going to give you some answers here at the at the other half of the break and I think you know what some of those answers are I asked that question back in February and March I said this this is too massive it's it's too big and the media is treating these things as if they're just magically appearing but they're not I mean like the deficits that appeared Friday the magical yeah. one they pushed yeah. the button and lo and behold it was only two thousand billion dollars off from what it was let, let me may I ask you this question people think that Obama is using the unions is it possible that it's the other way around? And I don't mean just the unions. I mean th these vast organizations that, that, that he is not necessarily the grand architect, that somebody else has, well, has, has sketched this out. Well, I've got to tell you, this question hit me today. I, it's off the subject of, of money. But when the Attorney General, Eric Holder, who I've not been publicly very fond of ever since he decided to, you know, go in the bag on China on the treasons and the, trying to buy our election mm -hmm. uh, during the Clinton administration, then gave us Mark Rich a pardon, one of the most evil men to ever walk the face of the earth, and was covering up, and now decides that Black Panthers can't, you know, who carry guns into precincts should not be prosecuted. But despite the president saying we're going to move on on interrogation policy, announces he's going to have a special prosecutor today and appoints one. And I'm going, wait a minute, who's running the show here? I mean, you've got to, uh, for the first time, I've had to ask myself, is Barack Obama really in control? Neither he's disingenuous, which I wish not to believe about the President of the United States, or maybe the question is who's really in control here? And so it's a time what to ask that question. What makes you say that? What, explain, what makes you say that again? He has said my policy is, look, the Attorney General is appointed by him. I mean, and by the way, confirmed by Republicans who stood there and praised him. Let's understand, this thing over here you did yeah. is not one party. Oh, I This know. was everybody oh, did yeah. this, and they're you still doing until, it. I think it's on Wednesday yeah. we're doing some things on um, some of the framework that's been put in. It was put in by the, by the oh. Bush administration. Well, yeah, this, yeah, is both, this is socialism. Washington, you know, so, so, Washington is corrupt. Washington Washington has made itself the enemy of the American people is what's happening. But let me, let me not stray off your point, which is what I said was, Eric, the president said we're going to move on. The country said move on on the interrogation policy. Eric Holder announces he's going to have a special prosecutor today. He's under pressure from the ACLU from MoveOn.org, from many of the very, very most liberal groups in my party, or I consider extreme groups in my party. Sure. And, and so, new, and so it, would you agree with me that there is a new Democratic Party? Oh, we, we, that's a, a subject we need to get. There is a, I am the, of the Democrats of the common man. That's right. where I come from. This, this, Demo is, this is a different Democratic Party, and hopefully over this time we'll have some you time say, to talk about it. Would you say it's a revolutionary no, I would say it, well. I would say it's revolutionary only since it's elitist. It's elitist, and it believes that it knows best, and it is so interconnected. And money it has is made it, brilliant. and it is, and you know, you got people like George Soros in the middle of it, and you okay. know, and uh, Rob Emanuel. I mean, the hang people on, you've got on, Pat, it. I, 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 hang on for a second, because I, I, I want to ask you this question, America. You give me another fifteen minutes, will you? And what I just asked Pat, would you say this new party is revolutionary? You answer that question yourself.